Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the start of the BMW Season 2. I get, I get the exact one. The BMW Sim M2 CS Racing Cup Season 2, to be precise. I'm Lydia M. Smith, and joining me is Cameron Roger today. And Cameron, we are starting things off on the mighty Imola. Yes, we certainly are. This is one of the... In my opinion, one of the best tracks there is on R Factor 2 in general, just the, the general layout of it and also the quality of the actual track itself. And for having that as the season opener, it's uh, really yeah, one of the, the best options. And yeah, new season as well. So we don't know really what to expect. Obviously, we're now a, uh, a support series to the GT Pro Series that will be coming up later this evening as well. So slightly different formats to what it was um, last season. And that's obviously going to bring some new challenges to the drivers as well. And if you go to the BMW series, of course, it will be 30 drivers taking part in the BMW M2, obviously. Uh, it would be cheating if they brought any other bigger BMWs along. Um, of course, as you say, we're going to have a 15-minute qualifying session followed by a 20-minute race. Uh, qualification for this, if you are wondering, you know, out there, maybe want to take part, does take part every single week. Keep your eyes peeled for it. Obviously, we're on Imola. And next, we'll be moving on to Spa. And then, of course, through Silverstone. Basically, following the same tracks that the GT Pro Season 3 will be taking. If you don't know what GT Pro Season 3 is, well, you can keep your eyes peeled because in, well, 40 minutes time, you'll get to see it live right here on the same channel. Certainly on the R Factor Live Twitch channel, obviously, where I'll be a broadcast on traction out there on youtubes on many 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 places but let's talk about the races we have today obviously we have a lot of action throughout you can see all the rest of the rounds there as well uh we will of course be moving to the mighty spa was introduced um just God, it must be about three four months ago now i'm trying to think when it was it was just just before december wasn't it something like that yeah yeah it's, uh some point in december yeah we had the uh WTF won three hours of Spa, which is uh, quite nice. And that's obviously going to be the second race of the season as it did uh, finalize the uh, the season just gone. That also finished before um, Christmas as well. So we've had a couple of months off and we're back here. And as you can see, we're really going to six of the best tracks that there are uh, available in our factor two, starting here at Imola. Then moving to, we're going to be running a uh, bi-weekly calendar so in two weeks time we'll have spa francorchamps then silverstone on the gp layout nurburgring with the uh, no chicane layout then sebring and also the uh recently updated indianapolis to finish up in may you have to be clear about the no chicane layout it's quite a big difference on the nurburgring but of course we want to talk about imola where we are today uh, some fantastic racing we've had obviously through these seasons and obviously going into the bmw m2s we should be no surprise to see how this is going to work out. As I say, 30 races. Now, do not be surprised if you maybe see some names that you'll also be seeing in the GT Pro. Qualification was open to everyone for the BMW Series. Obviously, for the GT Pro, they need to qualify via the Ch GT Challenge, etc., etc. There are certainly some big names. Obviously, Erhan Yeovsky being the main one, the current reigning champion, two times reigning champion of the GT Pro season. However... He is up against some stiff opposition this time around, Cameron. Yeah, he, uh, he certainly is. There's a lot of top-level teams as well getting their drivers in. Uh, in our second-place qualifier was uh, Marcel Cinchik, who has done many of the uh, the top R Factor 2 races. Obviously, he, he doesn't do absolutely everything like some of them. Like Erhan, uh, he pretty much does every single competition. But Marcel, if you don't know me, he is a very, very fast driver. And he's certainly one to, uh, to look out for, especially in this series where we have... A, uh, only a 20 minute sprint race. So you've got to be very quick out of the blocks. You can't be uh, thinking around, thinking or waiting around too much. You've really got to get in. And he is certainly someone to look out for as well. Also his teammate, uh, Yuri Toman as well. Yuri has come back to uh, R Factor 2. He was away for a little bit. The last sort of, six months or so, he's been getting into all these high level competitions. And also uh, last year in the, uh, in, this, uh, in this championship last year, he also was featuring in quite a number of those races. So he's obviously a bit of a, uh, a uh, master of this car. Don't adjust your eyes, guys. There is two drives in there, Philip and Johannes. It's not a not a bug, not an error in there. They're both running alongside. Uh, but yes, the Varka Sim Racing guys are really running pretty hot right now. Three drivers in the top four. You mentioned Sinsik, uh, Schmidl in there as well as Yuri Toman, all putting up some cracking times. Uh, Sinsik hitting the 
fastest times so far. I can tell you in practice they had gone a little bit quicker, uh, so we're expecting them to eke out a little bit more time uh, throughout. Also, some other GT Pro drivers in there. I can see Shara, obviously, uh, within there. There's a couple that are running um, across. I think Alex, uh, uh, sorry, Alan Terzik's in there as well, I believe, uh, coming in to the GT Pro Season 3 as well. Has yet to place a time, though. Yeah, and Alan obviously did uh, pretty well in the GT Challenge as well, uh, which, as you say, has got him into GT Pro this year. So he's a uh, quite a big one for the GT concept of cars at all. Obviously, the BMW M2 is a slightly um, lower category from the, the GT3 spec that you'll be seeing later on this evening, but it's certainly a, a, a fierce car in itself, as we see Chinchik there, go to provisional pole position by over two tenths of a second. So I did say he was quick and now he's just uh, proving it, but there's still nine minutes to go in the session. Smashing time there. Very much close to what we saw. I think it was uh, 156.3, I think was the fastest with Smiddle uh, put out there. Apologies if I'm uh, pronouncing Smiddle yeah, incorrectly there. It says as best I can uh, pronounce it, but the Varga guy is still looking very good. Dreis, uh, actually, Johannes Dreis has, has slipped down to eighth position now. Was looking good, but uh, Lucas Verla, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see there's some names that I'm not used to throughout the GT Pro season. Obviously, covering the GT Pro over the last two seasons, very much used to some of the guys. Obviously, uh, Borja Milan, I also saw uh, within there, uh, currently sitting in 16th place, though. So quite a large spread of time. I'm not going to lie, Cameron. Mm -hmm. I'm used to seeing these a lot tighter, but this is a, a two plus second time gap between the 26th and 1st right now. It's a big old gap per lap. It, it certainly is, and it's uh, it's a quite an interesting uh, quite interesting point to make up. Obviously, last year, every single one of the races was at some form of the Nürburgring Nordschleife as well. So there's obviously been quite a big difference this year with us going to sort of the quotation marks normal Grand Prix venues. So that's going to be a slightly different factor for these drivers uh, driving this car. But also the qualifying system has changed a little bit. It used to be basically an open qualifying session where it was open for about uh, for about a week, I think. And obviously the drivers could go on and do as many laps as they want. Whereas now it's down to three two-hour sessions. So you don't have so long to get your qualification laps in and to get up to speed with the car. So always, oh, uh, Spino goes flying over the curbs there. So exactly in the qualification, if you mess up a lap and you hit a curb like that, then uh, that can really hinder your chances to uh, to get qualified for the race. And therefore, there could be some drivers missing out. All the race setups, obviously, per track, track variations will uh, alter the race setups, etc. quite considerably. Track knowledge, all this sort of thing that comes into it. Obviously, a lot of these guys, you know, Pretty much most of these sim racers will know all these tracks, especially the tracks we're racing on because they are uh, certainly very popular ones. Uh, Gergo Baldi uh, certainly sitting pretty decent. Eighth place has now taken that position. As you can see, though, eight tenths, even down to tenth place is nearly a second off the leaders at the moment. It really is a big split between, I would say, the top five. I would be, uh, be, be generous and say the top five. Baldi Certainly trying to use every part of the circuit. I think it's safe to say there. Uh, and I know Jimmy Allison will certainly be keeping a kind, <laughs> a keen eye on uh, on cutting, etc. Um, oh. Maybe just uh, to to point it out right there. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this car as well. Obviously, it's a more it's obviously a, a race race specific car, but it's more based off a, a road chassis. And uh, obviously, in certain ways, it's not quite as set up for the very extreme things that you can do in a race car, such as the huge curbs that you get here at Imola. And you can see, especially through that uh, Variante Alta, they're absolutely sending it over because if you can straight line a chicane as much as that, you'll gain a lot of time, especially in a, in a car like this, where momentum is so important down these really long straights. Now, Gogo Baldi is going to come to the line currently in ninth place. Is he going to improve? Yes, he does. Up into sixth position, but he's still over six tenths off the pole position. Oh. Coming down. That's, that's some serious airtime right there. Wow. <laughs> I'm not too sure his car appreciates it, but there we go. And as you say, the times, they're tumbling a little bit. They're starting to come down a little bit. So Snick not quite able to top his time off, but Baldi does get himself up into there. That forces Drace down as well. I think uh, Rama Molana has just snuck up into the top 
ninth position so into the top 10 now as Trey slips down again there it is Alan Tursik finally putting himself a time in as well he goes into seventh place it's interesting to, to see uh, a, a man of his caliber as well with seven tenths off but that is just how quick these top guys are I mean if you if you look at that top four Chinchik, uh, Schmidl, Toman and Yoyovsky are four of the names that you see all over the top of our factor two competition and obviously coming here for the uh, M2 uh, CS Racing Cup as well as Garcia goes to line improves only up to 28th though so he's still got a little bit of a way and here's some two seconds off pole position so hopefully he'll be able to improve because he should have enough time with four minutes left on the clock. Andy Garama Milano going into third place there a great time coming out of 156.899 so one of the uh, top five drivers that have broken the 157 market so far obviously Yovsky slipping down to fifth position now so pressure on uh, Yovsky the two-time GT Pro Series champion we'll see whether he can post a quicker time as time keeps on ticking just under four minutes remaining now in qualifying to see if anybody else can reach into those top positions Nagy does David Nagy comes through that's an eighth place for him as the times do start to tumble yeah they're starting to come in now and yeah Remco Mayor I would expect him actually to be a, a little bit higher up but um, as a previous it was Tom is going to back out of that lap um, and I did pre previously mention this car has a lot of um, momentum based driving obviously it's not the, the most powerful car in the world so when you're coming out of the corners, you really have to maximize the every millimeter you can on the track because that is go, you know, you're on the straight for 20, 30 seconds, especially the main straight. So you any time that you lose that's that final corner, you're just going to lose 10th after 10th after 10th down the straight. And that's why you see these uh, these drivers really sliding it out of the corners, trying to get the absolute uh, peak slip angle to get as much grip as they can. But now Drace is going to come to the line. Where can he go? Up into 10th position, so top 10 for him. Managing to maintain just about into that top 10. Yuri Toman, as we saw backing out, did actually get a faster time, so it's still in that fourth position. Hasn't yet improved his spot. What can Michael Smiddle do as he comes over the line? Looks like he's not going to improve. So he's on his warm-up at the moment, so we'll see what he can sneak out of it. Here has Erhan Yayovsky, the man from Roman Grosjean Esports, looking to come over the line. Looking pretty quick right now, gone green on both times, which improving his time, which should be a quick one. As he goes over the line, it is a 156.6, so it puts him up to second place, just one tenth off Sisnik. Sinsik, sorry, apologies. And Yoyovsky, you would expect him to be up the front because he did so well in these cars last season, taking out four victories in the 10 of last season, obviously getting to the final, which he won as well. So he, he knows these cars very well. And it's good to see that someone is going to uh, be giving him really good battle this season in the case of Marcel Chinchuk, who absolutely flies over the curbs. He's done a purple in the first sector, only a tenth down in the middle sector, but that looked a bit uh, awkward through that chicane. So I wouldn't be surprised if he actually lost time there. Uh, probably going a little bit too far over the limit, but he only has two corners left now. See if he can keep this pole position because we've only one minute left. I don't think uh, you obviously will have enough time to get around. So this could be... Uh, provisional pole position either way but can he improve coming out the final corner like you might as we mentioned we did see some 156 threes in the practice so we know there's certainly a little bit more time in the tires let's see if we can squeeze on through it is no it's not going to be it was a 157 157 8 so definitely made mistakes and here's Smidley, you can see he's gone purple in the first sector, green in the second, so that's an improvement. Only one tenth behind Yayovsky, so real potential here to maybe snake that first position, take the pole position off his teammate, the Varga Sim Racing team. Can they lock out the front row as he goes over the line? That's looking good. It takes the second place off Yayovsky, and that will lock out the front grid. That is fantastic for Varga Sim Racing.
That is, as you say, a lockout. So they can control the race from here and try and get both their drivers onto the podium. And obviously with that chance to get the ticket to uh, BMW Sim Live as well as Baldi goes up in to us. No, Yoyovsky comes back. Yoyovsky oh. managed to do another lap. We didn't think he will. He must have done two laps in a row. Gets up into second place by only 24 thousandths of a second. And he gets himself back onto that front row and that looks like it is the qualifying session over and that was very close at the beginning i was at the end of the the uh, qualifying session with only those top three drivers about a tenth of a second apart so i think this uh 20 minute race is going to be quite close it's an incredible finish in there no doubt about it the dries two got as well sixth and seventh so johanna's managing to put up a top time towards the end lots of little times tumbling through let's have a look at the grid to see how is it stands as we mentioned yoyovsky Sneaking his way into second position. Fantastic there. But it is Marcel Shinchik in first position on the grid. What a, what a great start for the BMW Sim Racing Series qualification. As we are just waiting to get the grid on your screens. Uh, Vargas Sim Racing, though, what a great, great start from those guys. They are, what, first, third, and fifth on the grid to start things off. Yeah, that is obviously uh, a huge uh, point for their uh, factor for their team, I should say, because if they can get themselves in a position where they can be as a controlling this race, getting themselves into that top three, because the top three are where the, the prizes are for each race. So the, the podium gets uh, 500, 250 and 100 euros. So that's where the prizes are, with obviously the winner going to BMW Sim Live as well. So getting into those positions is very crucial. And if you can sort of help your teammate and then later on in the season, uh, when you get in this position again, you can then swap around and help your other teammate get in, then that could be a, a big factor for them as we see the, the grid run down on, on your screen. Don't forget, 30 drivers in this, although it does look like Shara already uh, going to be looking at a DNF as things get underway. Andre Tassetto down the end there. We expected maybe more from him, but uh, it didn't quite work out. Jorge Lopez closing out the back of the grid. Let's see what he can bring in this opening BMW Sim M2 CS Racing Cup. Race number one here at Imola. As the race is underway. And it's already a great start, as far as I'm aware. Yes, we're actually coming to uh, to end the first lap. So unfortunately, we missed the uh, the first lap there. But as you can see, uh, Marcel Cinchik has managed to keep the lead now with 18 minutes to go of the 20 minutes race as we come all the way down this start finish straight down through the the little kink of turn one into the real breaking zone, which is turn two and three here. And as we can see, uh, Cinchik has led the way through this opening lap. And now Yoyovsky is on the back of him with Schmidl in there as well. And Andika Rama Malana up into fourth place as well. So he is having a, a good showing here. But obviously still plenty can happen. And these guys, as you can see, they're pushing it to the absolute limit in these cars. And that's going to make it uh, quite interesting and quite uh, awkward with some uh, overtaking maneuvers, I'm sure. Anna Thrice has passed Philip Thrice as well. So switching places after the qualification. Looking great for him. As we mentioned, we do already have Shara out of the race. So he's a DNF. So, you know, maybe he just wanted to get some practice time in for his GT Pro Series. Because <laughs> he's going to be sitting in the pits and uh, not taking too much part in this one. Yellow flag, a little popping up there. Didn't see any incident per, per se. But you can see Yajowski's still hot on the tail of Sintik as the race gets underway. That's actually a good point. Some drivers will be doing both of these races. They've got to learn two different cars. And obviously, they're trying to maximize their chances of winning some uh, some prize money as well. But it looks like uh, the likes of such such as uh, Yoyovsky giving it the absolute full beans in both series as Malana has got a penalty already. So that must be for track cuts, which is quite surprising considering we've only had one and a half laps of this race. But there are track cuts enabled. And if you go over the limit too many times, then the game will automatically give you a penalty after um, so many cuts. I believe it's either three or five um, for these uh, official competitions now as he obviously coming onto the main straight needs to get himself in a good position um, to be able to get onto the back of Chinchik, but is struggling to get close just at the moment. Yeah, 
be great for Chinchik to start things off. Started off as the pole position leader and will continue that way. Yeovsky did have a couple of peaks left right, but not working out for him. And as you mentioned with the time penalty for Milana, obviously maybe emphasizing why he's up into fourth position so quickly ahead of Yuri Toman, who started off in that spot. Smiddle holding on well. This is on the tailpipe of Erhan Yeovsky, the Roman Grosjean Esports driver, sandwiched between the Vargas Sim Racing. As he tries to squeeze up closer, you were talking about this camera and how much they have to eke out and basically straighten out the corners. Looking at a little dive up the inside, a little peek there from Sweden, trying to maybe make the veteran Yeovsky flinch a little bit and go a little bit more defensive. He's actually backed off Cintic there, so that's definitely sort of worked in his favor. So it buys Cintic a little bit of space to breathe, but look at Smiddle all over the back of Yeovsky, trying desperately to force him to make an error. And that's the the main factor that you have to do in um, in sort of this this style of racing. You don't have too long to plan your moves, so you've got pounce on every single opportunity that you get. As you're going to get a replay here of the race start, and you can see Yoyovsky there trying to get a launch around the outside, but around the outside of turn two is very difficult indeed. Is what well on board with Michael uh, Schmidl, who is going to uh, just be watching these guys, trying to see if they're going to be making any sort of major contact. And it seems that, oh, there was actually a bit of contact there. Chinchik just cut off Yoyovsky on the exit, but uh, not quite enough to cause any sort of issues for these guys. Very close to spinning, I thought there, Chinchik. That was uh, your classic uh, spin turn that you'd see being delivered but didn't quite work out so he's luckily see no penalties no just a bit of racing simple start there Borgia Milan up to 15th place right now starting now in 10th so really slid down at the start look at this the challenge coming through Yayovsky he's under pressure Smiddle neck and neck alongside him can he hold it he will have the inside line in a moment so it's looking like Yayovsky certainly going to be in trouble can't get around the outside has to give up the position as they come into the chicane and Will just manage to hold on, but Smiddle is not hanging around here. He wants to get past Yeovsky. Yeah, he absolutely does. This is not only for, for pride, this is also for, for points and prizes. As uh, we had Rama Milana has DNF from the race. He's gone down the grid. I do wonder if that's uh, some sort of connection issue as now Schmidl goes for a bit of a look down the inside, but not quite enough to, to make a move there in Sutoza. But yeah, we have lost uh, Rama Milana at some point in the, the last sector. where he went to but you can see how the position's moving that does put Toman back up of course thrice Johannes thrice up two places from the start looking great so far and uh, some serious movers and shakers down the bottom there Mjord Blazek looking really good up into 14th 15th still 13 minutes to go in this race and really the the story so far is about Jajowski having to defend the Varga boys desperately all over his back of course you know He's the king of the GT Pro season, but right here, right now, in the BMW M2 CS Sim Racing Season 2, he is very much under pressure. And not really the one, I think he'd pr much prefer to be the man putting pressure onto Marcel Sintek, but as it is, he's having to be defensive. Now it looks like he's bought himself a little bit of time. Nice little slide mm. around that corner, straightening out as best he can, and he's certainly making ground on this leader. Yeah, this, uh, the gap, uh, you know, see the gap between these uh, two Varga cards sort of yo-yoed a little bit. Now he's coming back at Chinchik, and you can see just those little slides and those little gaps that you can make in the corners are so crucial to having a go. As we saw uh, Schmidl, he was side by side with Yovsky on the previous lap, and now he's nowhere close. As we're going to see a replay here, and this is Borja Milan. He's had a DNF, so this must have been some sort of issue that he had. Oh yeah, he's gone for a bit of a spin there. He's going to get collected by a couple of the cars in the background. And he's going to go into the wall, and I assume with some suspension damage uh, has caused him to DNF from the race. He didn't collect more than he did there. Managing to slow a couple down. And you can see, oh, hello. And Tertzik getting involved. Look at oh. this. Coming on the side, almost on two wheels, pushing him sideways. Who's sneaking through? And Tertzik, I think that was Kiss. Was it Kiss that was just ahead of him? Yes, managing to squeeze on by. But Alan Tertzik, the man that we'll, you'll be seeing uh, just in about 30 minutes time in the GT Pro season, certainly under pressure. 
Yeah, he certainly is, and he's going to be uh, trying to get now back on uh, on the back of uh, uh, Daniel Kish because uh, it seems like their their names on the little icon are actually the wrong way around. Because it's Daniel Kish who's driving for Zancho Simsport and uh, Alan Terzic in this uh, BS competition car just behind with the uh, with the zebra on the back. But also uh, David Naj is in this race, and he is uh, a champion elsewhere in cars similar to this. So you would expect him to be a little bit higher up, but that just shows you the level of competition as well with uh, Alain Terzic. He is, as you say, going to be racing GT Pro Series later, the absolute pinnacle of GT racing in R-Fact 2. But he is still here and struggling to get well inside the top 10, which just shows you how good these, uh, these top drivers are in the M2 CS Racing Cup. That's it, looking to squeeze the pressure up the inside. Gish looking pretty solid for it, though. Further afield, the Trice boys looking very good, still in fifth and sixth position. Ten minutes now into the halfway marker. And the race is certainly hotting up. The tyres will very much be ready to go. And you can see Antersic looking to make his move. Tries to force him around the outside. I'm not too sure that's going to work going into Tamborella, but he's going to try and give it a go. Tersic really trying to muscle his way through this one. He's going to have the inside now, but it's just muscling too much. And it's caused a bit of a ruckus. It's wiped out a couple of drivers. And that is certainly not something that's going to get looked at kindly for Alan Tersic. I would not be surprised there's going to be a, a post-race penalty coming to him as that's uh, Daniel Kish who's pulling off to the side as well and uh, Lucas Verl was involved in that one as well as a couple of other drivers uh, I think had a bit of contact there so unfortunately uh, for those couple of drivers that is going to be them pretty much out of the race out of the running of getting up well inside the well inside the top 10 and obviously uh, it is a little bit of a difficult one because it's obviously the top three that really gets the, the prizes but you want to be getting the experience for the races later on because even though uh, only the, the winner will get the tickets to the uh, BMW Sim Live final, uh, then if they race and win another race, it will then be the second place person who gets it. So you need to still be up the front for when these top guys start winning races early or later on in the season. You can then put yourself in a position to win a ticket without winning a race. So that's what uh, you need to be doing. And unfortunately, getting yourself uh, in little scraps like that is not what you want to be doing. Three bumper to bumper, continuing on. As it were, Yovsky keeping the pressure on Shinshik there. May have just uh, tweaked a little bit. You can see having to tap the brake slightly, Yovsky sort of second guessing whether he's going to get closer and closer to Shinshik's bumper. It's middle looking, waiting, hoping for any error that Yovsky may well make. And as it stands, these three cars within four tenths of a second of one another, leaving the rest of the field behind. You can see it's a three second gap to Toman in third. And look at this, Schmidl trying to force something, maybe hope for Jajowski will go defensive, but he's not falling for it. The veteran knows exactly what he's doing. And he's doing, uh, Chinchik here is doing a really good job in holding these drivers behind, especially considering I believe he didn't, uh, at least he didn't really feature last season if he did, did did do a race here or there, but I believe he didn't really do a race. And Schmidl and Jovski between them won eight of the ten races last season. So they've got a load of experience in this car. They know what it's like. And to be holding up some drivers like this is a, a very good job. But we do know how fast Chinchit can be. Uh, we just need to see if he has the uh, the mental stamina to hold on to it for, for the entirety of the race. Because being on the limit as they are, you see through here in Peritella, they just get the car those couple of degrees sideways. And you've got to get that perfect every single lap if you want to be winning uh, a race of this level. So tight, the racing action between these three. They are leaps and bounds ahead at the moment. Yuri Toman behind. Hello. We're going to go three wide, maybe, for a moment there. They thought about it. Smith and Yajowski all having a little peek to see if there was an opportunity. That's Shinsik going a little wide. And Yajowski maybe trying to pounce on it. Can't quite squeeze through. But you can see he is sniffing the fumes of that BMW right now. Looking to try and make a maneuver. See if he can squeeze up the inside. But oh, Shinsik, oh my word. How is he hanging on to this right now? And more impressively, just how good is this racing between these three? 
And look how close they're getting. With only uh, six and a half minutes left on the clock, means we're going to be having uh, definitely three more laps, but maybe going into a fourth lap. So that we still have plenty of action for these guys. Now, you obviously trying to get down the inside into uh, turn number one, but he's actually having to, uh, he's actually flashing there a little bit. But now Schmidt has got a double slipstream. He's got massive overspeed going to the outside. On the outside of turn two, it's going to be really difficult, especially with how late Yuyovsky is able to break. Unfortunately, that is not an opportunity there for Schmidl, but these three are basically bumper to bumper here at Imola. Absolutely neck and neck. Any error will force a serious problem for one of them. You can see the two Varga boys really desperately trying to force it to make, try and make the maneuver stick, but Yayovsky is not having any of it. My word, you could slip a piece of paper between them. Yayovsky thought about it, didn't go for it. Schmidl looked as well. They're all looking to try and make any maneuver they can, still within five, well, five tenths of a second between them. You can see Yuri Toman just about keeping up. He's under pressure, by the way. You can see Dreis is up behind him as well, so pressure there. Yuyovsky once again forcing Smiddle to just try and make a move, but not having any of it. And since Sinsik at the front is just hanging on right now. I fear in the next five minutes, I, you know Yuyovsky is going to try and make a move. You absolutely know he will, and he has the uh, the ability to, and he's actually got a very good exit there out of Aqua Minerale, but this, um, this chicane here, a variant out, is so difficult to make an overtake, but it, this is the chicane where you set up the move later as they absolutely send it over those curves, trying to get every last millimetre they can. Now, schmidl has got a bit of an overspeed, but he's going to have to go to the outside as we come down towards the uh, the two Rabatsa corners to do the... Uh, the final couple of corners, but look how close they are getting. They're trying to do absolutely everything. Now, Yossi oh, goes down the inside. Massive dive bomb into the final corner. Now, Schmidl's going to get up the inside as well. So, Chinchi loses two positions there. And now, there's contact with Yossi. He's going to get a really bad exit. Now, Schmidl might be taking the lead. Oh, and as he knows, he goes for a spin. He, he has to give him a position back, surely. And Yossi goes out. And I've got to feel that Schmidl, that, that was an error. I don't know. But, oh my word, you knew it was going to come close, that's for sure. Shinsik neck and neck still, he still wants a piece of this front lead. He may well be able to take it back off Schmidl at the moment. But I just feel that Schmidl maybe had to give it up. They make contact as well. Small little nudge there. And Shinsik will indeed retake the lead. And these teammates are scrapping their bumper to bumper making contact with only two laps to go here this is getting quite frantic and i think at this point all gloves are off oh as he hits the back of him schmidl makes contact with yoski and now makes contact with chinchik he's getting very feisty here the winner of four races last season he knows how to do it but this is getting a a little bit too feisty and a little bit too much contact and unfortunately that is also now Yoyovsky out of the race and that is out of obviously the prize positions as well so not only has he lost uh, this race but he's also lost a bit of money as well so he's not gonna be overly happy with that we'll have to maybe get a replay because he did come across on uh, Schmidl which is obviously what eventually turned him but was Schmidl coming back to the right in general there's a load of contact there in the two Ravatsas that's gonna be a big one for the stewards to look at Absolutely. And while that's all happening, of course, it's closed the gap. Yuri Turman just a second behind. You can see still very much under pressure by Dreis as well. But Schmidl is still feeling hot under the collar here. He wants that lead position. He's looking to dive up the inside. Not going to take it this time around. It keeps Sinchik going defensive. They go wide and you can see Yuri Turman really looking at this and thinking he may well have a chance. Just under three minutes to go here. In this race, Alan Tursik up to seventh place, also looking at a potential penalty later down the line after his collision earlier on. Baldi looking great currently in sixth place, and the Dice is fourth and fifth at the moment, still keeping tabs on this as Yuri Toman tries to close the gap. But it's all about Tintik and Smiddle with Yajovsky now sitting on the wayside. And it looks like we're just going to get another lap by about uh, 10 or 15 seconds or so. So there will actually be two laps remaining in this race as now Schmidl gets a run going to the outside. And is Chinchik actually lifting off there? Chinchik might have lifted off there to let his teammate through. That is an interesting tactic because now Toman's having to defend from Drace as well. Into turn one, as, or turn two even, as there's more contact as well. A lot of contact has been had in this uh, in this race so far. Well, that's an interesting tactic there from Chinchik to let Schmidl through. I wonder if that was a team decision, um, which is obviously going to be a uh, quite an interesting one considering they are, are one two three on the podium yeah looking fantastic at the moment for the Varga racing sim racing guys one two three that's just about what they could hope for the question is 
Has he let him through knowing that there's a potential penalty? Maybe that's what they're looking at down the line. Maybe they're already in conversation. I'm assuming they're all uh, in discussion for one another and probably was a little bit of heated, but it certainly looked like Sintik definitely lifted there, didn't it? When Smiddle looked to make the move. Or maybe he just realized that he wasn't going to be able to hold the position because Chinsik's looking like he wants to have another go back. And the, the, the if it is them thinking about penalty, that's interesting. I believe the minimum penalty is something around 30 seconds, so he's going to be nowhere near the uh, nowhere near the podium. Um, so that's going to be quite an interesting one. We need to see if Chinsik is going to come back here as we, we, we will be going on to the final lap of the race as we come around, as we're going to get there just before we hit zero. So we will get another lap. But Chinchik now, is he going to fight his teammate or is he going to let Schmidl take the win? Either way, he's going to get some prize money being in second place. But can he get that ticket to BMW Sim 1? Reyes moving up into ninth position, if I'm not mistaken. So he may be able to just pass. I'm not too sure exactly whether that worked. It suddenly looked like Silver and Reyes switching position. Hello, that's going to be the penalty. So that's Schmidl going mm -hmm off so that has to have been a penalty come through obviously we'll try and keep on we expected something to come through so Shinchik will indeed retake the lead there's Yuri Toman in second place and of course that moves Dreis up as well yeah both third and fourth Baldi into fifth and Schmidl of course that's going to be a long long stop for him out there of course you know he's still going to gain points from it even though it's going to cost him in terms of a stoppage but Yayovsky unfortunately with the DNF he's going to be looking at a big fan zero yeah that's a really difficult one and yeah uh, Jimmy Allison just confirming that is uh, that's been applied already so it's not going to be a post-race penalty he has been given the drive-through penalty in-game and that is a long one here although he's actually DNF from the race so he's decided not to continue but that is a yeah that's a difficult one because here as well at Imola the pit lane is so long you would lose a lot of time but it looks like Chinchik now is going to be able to take the victory here on the final lap if he cannot make a mistake and let his other teammate of Yuri Toman get involved but Toman has been closing on him throughout the, the second half of this race and also now Drace getting onto the podium he will be taking home part of the uh, part of the prize money as well 500 euros for first place 250 for second and 100 for third place in each of the races this season can confirm he was disqualified to middle there, so uh, penalty given, handed out. Baldy looking great. Final lap. Can he try and squeeze it past neck and neck right now? But he's going to be on the outside here. Certainly won't have track position. Can he try and go for the undercut? Don't think he's really got the drive out of it, but that was a hell of a wallop on the curbstone, but still looks like Philip Thrice will be able to hold on to that fourth position. As you mentioned, Johannes Thrice has actually backed off. He was on the back of Yuri Toman for a long time there, but it seems that uh, Toman has certainly pulled ahead. And here is Marshall Sinsek, pretty much led most of the race, will be going over the line as the race champion in the first race of the BMW Sim M2 CS Racing Cup. What a fantastic drive for him here at Imola. And of course, a fantastic drive for the Vargas Sim Racing Boys. Yeah, great race for them. Even uh, Schmidt there without getting his uh, podium, sorry, that guy's penalty, they would have had all three drivers on the podium or at least in the top four if Jovski was still in the race as well. So they're looking good uh, for the future of this season. Obviously, that is one of the tickets down as well. So five tickets left for the guys in this season so maybe Terminal Schmidl or even Jovski will be able to get that one uh, next time out as well but it certainly looks like uh, we're getting a rough feeling for who is going to be uh, trying to get those tickets and trying to get that money as we go through this season and it certainly looks like Chinchik Toman the two Brace brothers uh, Drace brothers I should say Baldi and uh, Terzic are going to be there fighting for the podiums in each race lively first race we've had Cameron that certainly had a bit of drama there's no doubt about yes. it <laughs> start to the season and the two front runners I think it's safe to say Schmidl and Jajowski from the previous season already starting with some DNFs that's going to open the championship up maybe Marcio Shinchik's going to be looking at that Yuri Toman certainly will have his eye on it but obviously we have a lot of races ahead of us but no doubt about it, what amazing, despite obviously what did eventually work out between uh, Schmidl and Jajowski and Shinsik, what a fantastic little race we had there for around about 10, 15 minutes. They were within three tenths of each other on each other's tailpipes the whole way. That's some skillful driving. 
Yeah, it certainly is. And I think we're going to see a bit more of that in two weeks' time where we head to uh, Spa Francorchamps as well, because that's going to be a massive slipstream fest in these cars with those really long straights up through uh, Eau Rouge and Radion, then obviously coming up into the, the final chicane through Blanchemont as well. It's going to be a lot of slipstreaming and a lot of action to come later on this season. Fantastic stuff. Here's confirmation of the results after 11 laps. Marcel Sinchik of the Varga Sim Racing in first place. Yuri Toman in second place. Johannes Dreis and Flip Dreis in third and fourth. Gergo Baldi into fifth place. Alan Turzik, well, he's in sixth place. We'll see whether any penalties were uh, are going to get applied there because obviously there was certainly some contact down the field. Uh, Diego Silva also in seventh place. Miguel Reyes eighth. Uh, Remco Mayor in ninth, and Michael Giesler in 10th place from needracing.com. And I wonder if some of these drivers will try and work their way up, get a little bit more used to, obviously they'll have to go through the qualifiers for each race again, but we'll see if we see some of these drivers back here in the uh, in the next couple of races. Obviously David Nash there down in 14th, I would expect him to be a bit higher with uh, the... Um, ability that he's got uh, in other series as well. Obviously, Thomas Schwack there as well. He's good in quite um, a number of other series as well. Paul August Lana as well down there in 19th. I would expect so many drivers to, to work their way up as the season progresses once they learn the car a little bit more. So these are definitely some drivers to look out for, but it's a fairly difficult format with it only being a 20 minute sprint race. You've got to really be on it. You've got to show up and, uh, and be on the pace straight away. Plenty of DNFs this time around and some big names in there, of course. We'll see how that changes. We have plenty more races throughout the season. As you may be aware, we will be following along with the GT Pro Series. This is the warm-up race, the support race, if you were, for the GT Pro. That will be following on shortly, of course. If you don't know what's going to be happening that well, there was a draft just last week and boy is it going to be entertaining this time around Cameron we have some 40 kilogram plus BMWs out there we have some radicals in there Aston Martins Bentleys out as they are all in the field it's not going to be a field of McLarens or Callaways like it has been for the last two seasons it's certainly going to be fantastic Oh yeah, it's going to be amazing with this uh, new ballast system. It's going to completely spice up and we have pretty much all of the manufacturers apart from one out of the uh, the 13 potentials. So 12 different cars on the field, some different generations of cars. It's going to be uh, quite an interesting one. So do uh, tune in to that in a, in a few moments time. Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That has been fantastic. The GT Pro Series powered by traction will be coming up in just a few moments time we're going to go to a break when we come back it will be ready to go with the lineup of Rene Butler Aidan Millward and of course Lewis McGlade we'll see you soon <laughs>